everybody it's Wendy from figure six gallery again so on my last video that we did I tried with the chalk paint I wanted to see what that would do and to be honest I love it it turned out really cool um, I did the peacock colors kind of like the ones I'm using today and look at those cells it made the coolest cells there's too much green in this one but uh, the paint that I used was chalk paint and it was the white and it really, it really looked kind of neat. So that, that was a good experiment to do. Um, we're going to do peacock colors. I'm going to do it on a bigger scale later on, but I just wanted to try it on this, um, uh, canvas board that I don't use often, but it was cheap. I bought some. So Dutch pour with a blowout, the blowouts that I have done, uh, turned out really cool. So this one was kind of a feathering technique that I did. Didn't intend on it looking like this, but I didn't have a hairdryer. So I used a straw and it looked really cool. The other one that I did was more of a feather technique. So this one turned out pretty impressive. I'm very proud of this painting. Now, when you do these, it takes a little time in the drying process because the paint's gonna be really thick. So you probably wanna cover it with a box um, or maybe some sort of a, an apparatus to slow down the drying so it doesn't crack. So, okay, so we're going to do the peacock color scheme. So the colors that I have today, they're not 100% the same color. Actually, we'll start with this guy. Um, it's mostly apple barrel purple pansy. This guy is, again, mostly the Caribbean apple barrel. And I mix them with a little bit. Um, this this guy here is all the Anita's um, light turquoise. This really bright green, mostly spring green, but I had another really cool green that I don't know the name of it. It was another Apple Barrel product, but I mixed them together. Uh, this guy is totally, um, oh no, that's not totally. It's antique copper with, what else did I use? Oh. It was this Anita's bronze. So I just kind of mixed it half and half because I thought the copper was a little too coppery for this project. Um, sorry, it was not the folk art. I had him aside. So anyway, I mixed all these colors a little bit randomly because I wanted to get the shades a little bit different than what they were. I'm going to coat the back first with, this is regular acrylic house paint and I just mixed it with a mix of um, my pouring medium, which is 50% Floetrol, 50% Glue All, um, Elmer's Glue All, or PVA. If you beginners ever hear anything that says, or people say PVA, it's, um, and I, I will screw up the total name of it, but PVA Glue, a lot of people are talking about Elmer's Glue or uh, the Elmer's Glue All or Skull Glue. Uh, when they say PVA, this is what most people use. So I just pour it into a, a drink container because it's easier to handle that way. So what I'm going to do is just pour just a light coat on the canvas uh, because it makes blowing out a lot easier. Now, since this is called a Dutch pour, we're going to layer the colors on the canvas and then we're going to cover it back with the base coat. So that's what the Dutch pour is. And then we're also going to blow out the feathers with a straw. Oh, it's funny. That color is actually a white. It's, uh, it's, I think bare acrylic house paint with no tint. It was a bright white, but the canvas it's, it looks a lot brighter than the paint, but that's okay. I'm not a huge fan of bright, bright white. I like it a little bit creamy or a little bit off white or, um, eggshell. So I am using just my a business card that took a flying leap into one of my paintings to smooth it out. Works great. Always make sure you get your sides. And with this canvas board, normally I use thumbtacks and prop it up on thumbtacks, but clearly this canvas board can't really put the thumbtacks in it. So it is up on four paper cups. Okay, so again, this 
I don't know if I said, this is my very first time doing this particular technique with the, the feathers for the peacock colors. So we're just, we're going to see how it works. Now, all these paints are mixed just a little bit thicker than normal, than, than I normally would, because uh, when you do the Dutch pour and the blowout, I like the texture a little bit thicker because it holds its, um, its shape a little bit better. I would almost like them to be a little bit thicker than this, actually, but we're going to see what happens. So uh, it's just trial and error. So we're going to start at the bottom. This guy, I already know I want him to be taller. Yeah, I actually, I actually wish that my paint was even a little bit thicker than this. So when you do, when you do the thicker paint, it tends to crack. So you really want to slow down that drying process again by putting a box over it or, or a bag. Um, I, I've used coat hangers and made like a little tent and put a, uh, like a garbage bag over the top of it just to slow it down a little bit. And I think on my, my larger pores, the ones that I just showed you guys, it took a good probably five or six days for those to dry because I did it so slowly and got very, very, very little cracking. I was very pleased. I was actually relieved, more shocked than anything, I believe. So I'm going to do like a, a finger here and I'm going to start pouring a little bit more on the bottom, the colors that I really want to stay on the bottom. And then we're not going to go up as high with these guys. And it's okay if it comes out the bottom, that's fine with me. Okay, so now the staple of a Dutch pour scares the heck out of me every time I do these, but they're they're really a lot of fun. If you guys have never tried a Dutch pour before, I highly recommend doing it. In fact, I'll show you another example. And again, the Dutch pour, you just pour the paint on and then back flow it with your, your background color. So I just layered, uh, it was purple, turquoise, orange, and of course in the middle, and then copper. I just lumped them in the middle like a bullseye covered it all with paint and then blew it out with a straw. So that, that's what a Dutch pour looks like. I've heard it called the paint bomb, uh, just because I guess maybe you're bombing it with paint. So if you ever hear either technique, there are a couple videos out there of a paint bomb. It's kind of like a, um, a, a Jaeger bomb, I guess, or, um, a fancy drink that you, you take the shot, dip it down in the, um, the beer or another alcoholic beverage. Um, that's kind of what you do actually. Okay. But yeah, it scared the heck out of me. Cause I'm like, I'm covering up all my paint. It's going to look terrible. Well, sometimes it doesn't turn out great, but sometimes it really does. So we're just going to cover it mostly. I mean the best that I can without really destroying the integrity of the other colors. So Okay, and I'm going to torch it because I don't want a whole bunch of bubbles and cells coming up. I don't want to stretch out those cells and make it all over. So, okay, carefully, I am going to kind of imagine where those, those fingers were, the feathers, and try to get this blown out appropriately. kind of missed him a little bit. Okay. And I might actually tilt, ah, do I want to tilt it? I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Um, turn him this way. Maybe I'll blow the bottom of that one out. Not a whole lot. I just want to make sure it's, it doesn't look like there's chunky paint. I might do that again, actually. Okay. So no, 
It doesn't actually look like peacock feathers, but it does have the peacock coloring, which is really pretty. So I'm going to go through and do the, the centers of these a little bit. Actually, I'm going to use a pen, a large pen that I took apart. Then a little bit off center. That actually looks really cool. Okay, so the metallic, um, the, the metallic that I'm using, uh, most of it is the antique copper. It might have another little reaction. The bubbles might come up a little bit. Um, it looks really pretty over here. I highly suggest anybody who does metallics, um, if you're not allergic to epoxy, do epoxy. It looks amazing. You can also use like a glass finish. It's like a one-step process. Put it on. It's similar to epoxy. I don't know if it's as durable, but boy, it looks amazing with the epoxy color or the, um, the metallics. So I'm trying to figure out a way to actually make it look like, uh, the peacock feathers. So maybe, maybe do a little A little bit of this and a little bit of that, I guess. I don't know. And then we'll blow it out just a little bit more. Maybe go right in the middle. And if you've seen my other videos before, I am pretty much a beginner. I've, I picked up painting again after many, many years. Um, and most everything I do, I've either never done it before or I've gotten requests to show you guys how I've done a previous project. So I'm very much a beginner, just like a lot of you are. So if you want to see something, comment below and let me know what you want to see. Okay, that actually layering it like that looks really cool. I'll push it back this way a little bit. Maybe I'll layer it even farther on that one. Ooh. Okay. So that, that looks really awesome. So the purpose of making it a little bit thicker is so you can create the ridge down the middle of the feathers and I'll get a close up for you but it really creates a ridge almost down to the canvas in some cases. Again, I think my paint's just a tiny bit on the thin side for this particular um, technique, but it will go down to the canvas like veins. And I'll show you that one uh, painting again. So this is that feather painting that I did. So it went almost down to the canvas and kind of stayed there with the thicker paints. So that's why I do a lot of, uh, I make them a little bit thicker just because it makes those ridges like you would see in a natural feather. So, but again, you want to make sure you dry these suckers slowly. Okay. It's going to dry a little bit darker. I'm, I'm pretty excited by it. Uh, I think, I think I'm going to start perfecting this technique a little bit more. Um, maybe with different colors, maybe a little bit less paint because I'd really like to see it uh, more um, blank space at the top. Uh, I think I'm also going to do a little feathering at the top as well. And I'm getting eye surgery in a week, so I have to wear my glasses and not my contacts, which makes everything a little more difficult. Okay, that looks really cool. I actually do kind of like the little imperfections or the cells in here because feathers are not perfect. And I actually really like it, um, except for maybe him down here. That's a little better. So guys, this is my Dutch pour feather blowout technique, um, with peacock inspired colors. 
it's going to dry and I hope it's going to dry pretty amazing. So I'll give you a, a close up. Sorry about the glare on there, but yeah, it, it looks, it looks pretty neat. So the center, I'm going to perfect this a little bit more, but the center of the, the peacock feathers, like the eye, I do want to perfect that a little bit more. So if I can do that, um, maybe you'll see it on another video at some point. So, all right, guys, um, I won't see you, but you will see me, me next time. Again, never be afraid to be a beginner and comment below if you would like to see anything. Uh, see my comments below and until next time.